Welcome to the Full Story Series. This is where Dan and I go through the old videos on the channel and put together videos that we had to break up due to either release cycles of the comic books or just how long the story was. Well, way back in like March, April, May, there was a storyline known as White Knight. This is an alternate universe version of Batman Joker in the Bat Family. And it explains the storyline of what if Joker went sane and what if he became the hero that Gotham wants and needs. Where does Batman fit in? It was a late night as the Batmobile speeds off through the gates of Arkham Asylum. As it pulls up, the guards come walking down the steps, stating, Right this way, sir. While the men walk, a familiar yet different voice asks, How is he? The cell door is open and inside. Bruce Wayne, Batman, sitting in his cell, chained up like the other inmates. One of the guards tells Jack Napier, the man who used to be the Joker, that he hasn't said a word. Batman gets up from his bed, towering over Jack, and Jack smiles, telling him, I'm in need of your help. But how did things turn out this way? The Joker free and Batman arrested? It began a year ago on a night, just like any other. The Joker skating through the streets on a jet-powered skateboard, taunting Batman to follow him over the drawbridge. The Joker makes it over, but inside of the Batmobile, Barbara tells Batman that he needs to not jump. The ferry is down below, and if they fall, the Batman steps on the gas, rocketing over the gap onto the bridge. He follows Joker as he skates off the highway and onto some nearby buildings, and Barbara shouts that there are people living in those houses! How do you know that they won't crumble under the weight of the Batmobile? The Joker skates down by a construction site, flipping the handle onto a cement truck to pour all of its liquid cement onto the ground. But Batman, still having no regard for anything around him, skits through the cement, not letting off of the gas, sending a wave of cement at the workers. But before they could get covered, Dick Grayson races by on his bike, grabbing the workers and moving them to safety. The Joker pulls on ahead, and Batman stops the car as Dick pulls up, telling Barbara that she needs to keep a better leash on Batman. He's out of control, and Barbara shouts, DUDE! He doesn't listen! Batman looks on ahead and chases after the Joker. So Barbara hops out onto Dick's bike, stating that he's getting worse, and Dick tells her she should have done what he did, leave. Batman runs on ahead, knocking over a security guard, and Barbara stops to make sure he's okay. But once Batman gets inside of the warehouse, the Joker yells, Congrats on another great performance, partner! Can't wait until they make a play set of a shipping over a bridge! However, there always needs to be a bit of challenge to our relationship! Always raising the stakes, making each of us stronger each time! Batman starts heading up to the next level of the building, stating, There's no relationship between us. And the Joker tells him, Come on! We're Gotham's favorite power couple! And just like any couple, we're supposed to always fight! <laughs> Just then, the Joker comes out of the shadows, wielding an axe, and Batman spins back, punching him in the face. The Joker yells, We're a team! Just admit it! That's our whole dynamic! The only thing missing is the lovemaking! Batman tells him, That's the thing. I only pretend that we're a team because it gives you some form of purpose. You can't see the whole truth that you don't matter. Not to me, Gotham, or anyone. The Joker begins picking himself up, asking, so we're gonna lay all of our cards on the table, huh? Guess that means I don't have to hold back! Batman tells him, I'm not holding anything back, because I've got nothing left. Joker swings, shouting, Vigilantism isn't about justice, it's about control! Fix the city in your own pathetic way of salvaging a broken life! Even Gordon is fed up with you, watching his men get turned into cannon fodder on the front line of a war that they didn't ask for! It's all falling apart, and there's nothing you can do to stop it! <laughs> Batman begins beating into the Joker, all the while he shouts, Face it! Gotham's greatest villain is Batman! But Batman continues to punch the Joker in one last time before telling him, Just stop talking! And then the Joker begins to hold up a small bottle of pills. Everyone rushes in to find Batman sitting over the Joker, with his bloody fist raised, and the Joker stating, I wanted to prove it with these. If I can get better, I can get this city back on track, finally showing you all that Batman needs the Joker. Batman grabs the pills, telling him, Fine, you want to get better, then open up. He pops the top of the pill bottle and begins pouring the pills into the Joker's mouth and then covering his mouth, forcing him to swallow. As foam begins to drip out of the corners of his mouth, a person recording with a camera phone hits save and walks away. 
The Joker lays lifeless in a coma, his mind beginning to put things about his life back together again. Before, when he was just Jack Napier, aspiring comic trying to make it in Gotham, his life becoming Joker, and how the madness began to sink in. He wakes up gasping from the nightmare, and as he sits in his cell, he looks at all of the Batman and Joker-themed things covering his cell. And back in Wayne Manor, Dick shouts, asking, What the hell is wrong with you? Batman, you've been acting completely out of control. Bruce, seemingly not listening, goes back to studying the pills that he just forced the Joker to take, stating that these pills are a complete mystery even to him. Dick shouts, he's not even listening again, and Barbara tells him, please, let us in. Tell us what's wrong. Bruce looks up with a worried look and then tells the two to follow him. As the three walk down the hidden staircase, they walk into what looks like a medical facility and they see Alfred on the bed dying. Dick and Barbara run to see him and they ask what's wrong with him and Bruce says that he's dying and they don't know the cause of it. He's been like this for a month. Dick looks over the cords connected to Alfred and notices that they have ice on them and he says that that's Freeze tech. You're working with Freeze. Bruce tells him that they've been making a lot of progress. He was just hoping that they could fix this so that they wouldn't have to see him like this. Later that night, Jim meets with the mayor to go over their problem regarding the Joker. Turns out someone at the scene leaked out a video showing Batman working directly with the GCPD, something that Jim has publicly denied to the city. He pours himself some coffee, stating that this isn't about the Joker anymore. This is about the public seeing another case of police brutality. The mayor shouts that it's not just that. The GCPD has turned a blind eye to Batman. There shouldn't even be a Batman. The fact that we need one shows that the GCPD is incompetent. Just then the intercom turns on and the secretary outside says that Dr. Leslie Tompkins is here to see them. Leslie walks in and says that Jack Napier has made a full recovery. Took some plastic surgery, but otherwise he's going to be fine. The mayor says, thank God, maybe now he won't sue them. And as Leslie holds up her paper, she says that's the thing she's worried about his mental condition. Whatever those pills that he ingested were, they seemingly have cured him. We would have assumed that it was fake, but you can't fake a CAT scan or IQ testing. He really is a genius. He's also been spending his time in Arkham Library for the past three days working on his own legal case. He's filing charges against the GCPD, Batman, and Gotham City. And given his newfound mental capacity, you should be worried. A short while later, Jack is brought into the interview room. And Jim says, Joker. And Jack stops him, telling him, Mr. Napier will be fine. But as he's set down in cuffs, he begins picking the lock, stating that he's going to assume that they're here to make him an offer. Jim gets up, telling him, You're lucky we don't add more time to your sentence for... And Jack talks over him, asking, For stealing a scooter, please. Batman caused more damage than I did. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to go to trial. I've been taking the rap for Batman's reckless vigilanteism for far too long, and now it's your turn. Jack places his arms on the table, going on stating that Batman has been endangering innocent individuals by driving an unlicensed, weaponized tank. He then endangered a construction site by plowing through a cement truck and injuring three people, knocking over an innocent guard. He then trespassed and destroyed thousands of dollars in medical equipment while assaulting me as I tried to surrender. And all the while, the GCPD did nothing but stand there and watch as Batman violently made me swallow those pills. So, if you won't arrest Batman, then I have no choice but to file suit against the GCPD to answer for his crimes. It is time to show Gotham that it's better than the Joker in the Dark Knight. So now, I'm going to be its White Knight. Jack Napier goes to trial. He tells the jury and the crowds that it is time for them to put away the criminal who is the root cause for all of this. The gatekeepers, the one percenters who allow this kind of corruption to exist in their city. As the Joker, he served his time and now it is time for Jack Napier to give back. Fight back against these gatekeepers. And then they can reclaim the city that they all love, Gotham. It didn't take long for the jury to reach a verdict and that verdict was to let Jack Napier free. As Jack walks the streets of Gotham, he finds himself in one of his old hangouts, Zoinko's Joke Shop. He walks up to the door, and just before he can reach for the knob, it flies open, and Harley shouts Daddy's home. She then says, yuck, look at that face. It's so normal. How about they clean it up with some makeup? And Jack stops her from putting the lipstick on him and tells her to hang on. He's wanted to come back here so that they can talk. He's been doing a lot of thinking, though. Please hear him out, Harley. He sits her down, telling her that first, he owes her an apology for the way he's treated her over the years. She was supportive even when he had his crazy mood swings. It was a psychotic obsession with Batman and she was caught in the middle of it. Harley shouts, yeah, she was, but keep talking about that stuff and you're gonna turn me on. Jack reaches into his coat telling her that he's not joking around anymore. It was unhealthy, but now it's all over. It's time for him to give her the version of him that she has always wanted. 
He kneels down, sliding a ring onto Harley's finger, and as she looks at it, she bursts out laughing, stating, <laughs> Nice try! You may have fooled the courts, but not me. Jack says, Put, I'm serious. And she kicks him in the stomach, asking, What? Did you just call me? Are you for real? Whining about love and feelings? Enough with this crap. Now go put on some freaking makeup and let's go rob something. He reaches for his medicine, and Harley grabs him, shouting, Stop with the pills! They're messing with your head. You don't need them, you need me. Jack tries to talk, stating, But Puddin'. And Harley slams his arm back down, yelling, I am not your Puddin'. Suddenly, Harley is kicked in the back of the head, and a voice tells her, No, she's not. A hand reaches down, and the original Harley Quinn picks up the ring, stating, Hey, Jack, apology accepted. As Quinn's hyenas begin sniffing Harley, she yells, You left! And Quinn tells her, Yeah, and now I'm back. Don't get me started on the violent cheerleader thing either. So to make sure that you understand, that cheerleader loved Joker. Whereas I loved Jack, despite his flaws. And now he's cured. So you can buzz off, cheerleader Harley. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Freeze stands in front of the cryo tube with Nora Freeze inside of it. One of the scientists says that they're ready to attempt reversing the Freeze tech, Mr. Wayne. And Bruce looks up and asks Victor if he's ready. He tells him that they shall begin. Barbara looks at the small glass case with a tube in it, seeing two mice with helmets, and she shouts, Oh my god, they're so cute with their helmets! Victor tells Bruce to proceed, and suddenly the glass case is filled with liquid. Barbara begins panicking, shouting that they're going to drown, and as the glass fills, the mice don't. Victor lets the mice out, stating that it has been a success, and Bruce tells him congratulations. Without any more delay, Victor begins to pull the tubes off of his suit, stating that there is no time to delay. And Bruce yells, Not yet! We have to observe the mice to make sure that they live. And Victor tells him that his help has been invaluable. He has given him a chance to save his beloved wife by harnessing technology pioneered by the Third Reich. And for that, he would like to thank both him and his father. Now, leave me alone. Victor begins turning the dial, and Barbara asks, does he really think that he doesn't have a million ways to stop him? And suddenly, Victor's helmet fills with the same liquid used on the mice, and Bruce quickly runs over to remove it. Victor gets back up gasping, but his skin begins to age rapidly, bringing him to his current age. Bruce says that this is what they were hoping to avoid. He was frozen in his 30s, and it's been about 50 years. Victor gets back up stating that he feels warm. And Barbara yells the mice, they died from old age. How do we know that Nora will survive this? And Bruce tells her, we don't. Victor crawls up to the cryo tube, and Bruce goes on stating that even if she does, they still don't have a cure for McGregor's disease, which is why she was frozen in the first place. Later, at the old Harley's apartment, Jack looks around stating that this is all so normal. He sits down and he asks, so you left me and an entirely new Harley Quinn took over? Harley sits down telling him, yeah, you're a narcissist who suffered from dysmethia and schizophrenic personality disorder. Hell, the pills may be causing an imbalance, which is why you're normal. You probably aren't cured per se, but with the right support, you could be. Jack remains quiet and Harley tells him, I'm a psychiatrist, remember? Jack then asks her, what did I do to make you leave me? And Harley asks, you really not remember? You were an easy man to fall in love with. Being with you didn't make me feel like a criminal, it made me feel free. But as we spent time together, I could see the obsession with Batman growing. It was like I was sharing you with Batman, and that's when I knew you were in love, but not with me. Things began to get worse, and that night when you abducted Robin, you almost killed him just to get something out of Batman. I stopped you and I could see it in your eyes. The man that I loved was gone, and all that was left was the Joker. I went to Batman for help, but when I returned with Batman, you had already killed Jason Todd. All that was left was blood. We never ended up finding Robin's body. Shortly after, Jack follows Harley to the roof and he asks, Did, did I murder Robin? And Harley tells him, You're the only one he knows for sure. Jack sighs and says that they need to save Gotham. They need to lead a rebellion. Turn Gotham against Batman by villainizing him, showing the damage that he's done. Harley asks, So Gotham City will be saved by the least likely person, Jack Napier. And Jack tells her, Yes, along with Harleen Quinzel. Because I can't do this without you. The following night, Jack asks all of Gotham's worst villains to meet. He tells them that they have spent too much time fighting with each other rather than fighting Batman. Tonight, he would like to change that, but first, let them all have a drink. Everyone takes a sip of their drinks and Harley hands Jack Mad Hatter's hat. Everyone looks around asking where's Clayface and Jack puts on the hat, telling them that he's here, more or less. What everyone doesn't know is that just prior to the meeting, Jack used the Mad Hatter's mind control to take control of Clayface. He had him dissolve into dust, and then Jack used that clay and put it into the drinks of everyone who is here right now drinking. 
The Hat would have had so much more of a problem controlling a small army, but if they could control one person and maybe put that person into everyone, everyone's eyes begin to change green and Harley asks if it's working. And Jack tells her yes, of course it's working. Over at Zonko's, the new Harleen begins to get dressed, stating that he's just a liar. After taking so many of those damn pills like a damn drug addict, she's going to destroy the Joker legacy. The worst part, she's enabling him. Anything for her desperate romance. She's just holding him back. Think that he won't break loose, but the Joker, he's more than just a man. He's a riot. Later, in the streets, all of the villains begin to attack the city together. Their strikes are all in sync, creating as much chaos as possible. Batman drives into Bane, stating, We need to hurry and move this to a less populated area. And Batman then fires two hooks, one hitting Croc and Bane, and he begins to drive off. As Batman is driving off up in the helicopter, Jim tells the pilot to focus on Batman. They can't lose sight of him. And Harvey shouts, We can't follow him. He's going to be fine. It's our guys that we need to watch over. They're completely overwhelmed down there. Jim shouts that they can't win this without Batman. Now follow my orders and follow Batman. Back on the ground, Batman whips the Batmobile around, flinging both Croc and Bane into a construction site. And he gets out stating, this is all a part of the Joker's plan. Croc and Bane look at each other and they begin to tear down the construction site. And Batman tells Dick and Barbara that they need to follow. Barbara tells him to wait. The building is going to collapse. And just as Batman begins to chase after, the support beams begin to give way and they come crashing down on top of him. He begins to pull his bloody and broken body out of the debris. And Barbara goes to check on him and he shouts, Just get away from me! He crawls into the Batmobile telling the computer to set auto drive, medical protocol, Wayne Tech hidden entrance. As it begins to speed off, Jim's helicopter touches down, and Harvey shouts, asking, What are you doing? We just left the others. We used to be cops. Barbara looks back at Jim and asks, What is happening to them? As the cops clear out, Jack heads over to the law offices of Hill and Hill, where Croc and Bane created the destruction, and Harley says, It worked. Jack tells her that it did. With the police busy with everyone, they could finally get what they came looking for. He starts sifting through the filing cabinet, asking, do anyone know why lawyers and accountants make paperwork so dull and confusing? He pulls out a stack of papers and he says, It's to hide secrets. And this, this is Gotham's biggest secret. Back with Batman, he pulls himself out of the Batmobile, losing more and more blood with every step. He tries to bandage himself, and as he looks at Alfred, he holds up his hand. The pain begins to become too much for Batman, and as Alfred looks up, he sees him fall to the ground. The next morning, Jack sets out to hold a press conference to show the things that he's recently learned about. He tells everyone that, for too long, they've been the victims of Batman's reckless behavior. No one to hold accountable, not even the gatekeepers. But recently, I've obtained something that proves the one percenters of Gotham want to drive our city under its control. And they want to do that with the Batman Devastation Fund. The gatekeeper slipped it into the Natural Disaster Relief Fund. These records show just how much it costs Gotham each year to have Batman. And that number is $3 billion. That money was for floods and hurricanes that never happened. $3 billion on Gotham's only disaster, Batman. That is why Batman diverted the battle away from the downtown so that he could protect the rich people in the financial district by sacrificing Backport. Many of you do not trust me because I was the Joker, but let me use the Joker's knowledge of the city to remove the plague that has been haunting you. Later, as Batman begins to wake up, he sees himself lying on a bed with wires connected to him. Freeze tech wires. He asks, did Alfred? And when he looks up, he sees Alfred sitting in a chair. Batman calls out to him, and when he gets out of bed, he notices that it's all ready too late. Alfred took himself off life support to rescue Batman, to rescue Bruce Wayne, his son. The next day, Bruce held services for Alfred's burial. And the whole time, no one never said a word. As the night sky comes, Dick and Barbara stand by Thomas and Martha Wayne's graves. And Dick says Bruce did his best to look after him, but he never knew how to raise a teenager. Back when he ran away, it was Alfred who would come after him, hugging him, promising everything would be okay. He always wondered what would happen if Alfred didn't come. Barbara looks over and sees the grave that is there for Jason Todd. And she asks, who's that? And Dick tells her that he was the first Robin, supposedly killed by the Joker, but they never found a body. He lifts his bottle to take a drink and Barbara asks, why wouldn't Bruce have told me that? That's huge. Dick goes on telling her that Jason was like a son to Bruce, closer than he could ever be. He takes a drink and Barbara says, Bruce is going over the edge. I need your help on this, Dick. Dick tells her that he's not a part of this anymore. He only came to the funeral for Alfred. And Barbara shouts that he may wear a different outfit, but he's still Robin. 
She grabs Dick by the collar, screaming that it's a fight between us and Bruce. Alfred was Bruce's moral bearing, and without him, there's nothing protecting Gotham. Elsewhere, the new Harley makes her way into a building asking where is everyone. Harley looks down and sees some clay and begins following the trail until she finds Clayface, lifeless. She notices the Hatter sitting off in the corner and pulls the mind control device off of him and the Hatter shouts asking, who? She tells him that her name is Quinzel and Napier took the Joker. Until he gets back, she's standing in. Hatter says, so she's Neo Joker. And Neo asks, was Jack here? Hatter begins to say his riddles and Neo shouts, English, you creepy leprechaun. And Hatter begins to explain that the Joker wanted to use his device to create an army. It's because it would be hard to influence that many that he used Clayface and fed him to every supervillain. Neo looks at Clayface and asks, is he even alive? And touches him. And that's when Clayface begins to turn to dust, only leaving his brain behind. Neo catches the stating that that's nasty, but she's pretty sure he's alive. She looks back at the Hatter, asking if he can override Napier's control. And Hatter begins to put on his control band, telling her, Yes, as long as I'm closer to Clayface's brain. Suddenly, there's a shuffle, and as Neo goes to check on it, she tells Hatter that he's welcome to tag along, but he better stop with the Alice in Wonderland crap. The door swings open, and as Hatter sees the room full of other supervillains, he says, Holy schmoly! And Neo tells him, That's better. As a new day begins in Backport, Duke, native to the borough, holds a rally telling everyone at first he didn't trust Jack Napier. He thought Jack didn't understand Backport or what it stood for, but all of that changed. Jack's actions showed that he cared about them, and in turn, he earned his trust. God knows that he doesn't look it, but Jack Napier, he's one of them, and that is why he is voting for Napier as councilman. Jack pulls the curtains down, revealing his new campaign, and Jack takes the mic, telling him that he is honored to be here today. Many of you may know who I am, or who I once was, but that has changed. I am here to work for your forgiveness. It is time for Gotham's elites to give the power back to the people that it truly belongs to, you. Together, we will show the other boroughs how to get things done. As Jack heads off stage to lead his protest, he stops before Jim and the GCPD asking, I hear that you're here to stop my peaceful protest. Harvey tells him, you aren't marching without permits. And Duke tells him, that's funny, because we submitted our papers last week and no one's gotten back to us. Harley begins yelling that he never got him, and even if he did, he doesn't help ex-cop turncoats. But while the two argue, Batman swoops down, taking both Jack and Duke down. Barbara shouts, asking, what do you think you're doing? And the crowds begin to shout at Batman, telling him, let him go. And Jack yells for everyone, stop, stop. Everyone, please back away so that no one gets hurt. I will go of my own free will. As Jack gets up, he dusts himself off, and he sits in the back of a patrol car, telling Jim, come sit with me. We have much to discuss. Later, at Jim's office, Jack takes a sip of his coffee and says that the first thing that he'll do as councilman is increase the budget on coffee because this is disgusting. Jim tells him, cut the crap. I don't care how many you've scammed. I know it's just another long con, so out with it. Jack says, fine, my idea is simple. I would like to redistribute the Batman Devastation Fund found in Mayor Hill's old firm and give it to the police force. With it, we'll create the Gotham Terror Oppression Unit, building up an elite task force with our best vigilantes, a squad of super cops. It would be a perfect compromise, mixing vigilanteism with a group of Gotham's finest. We get Batman to work with us rather than against. Batman and the kids can keep their secret identities. However, the vigilantes will wear GPS, body cameras, and play by the rules. It will allow for accountability. Batgirl is already frustrated with Batman and Nightwing will follow her. With them, we can learn some of Batman's secret technologies. Please look over my proposal long and hard. You'll see that the GTO is a good idea. As Jack leaves the precinct, Duke meets him outside asking if they've already let him out. Jack tells him, I was never actually arrested. While Jack walks down the steps, Harley grabs him, asking, when did you become such a good guy? And Jack tells her, it's because you're there to keep me honest. Harley kisses him, telling him that she's proud of him. Now take her out for the night on the town. Later in the evening, Neo Joker, now in possession of Jack's Hatter technology, leads an assault on the GCPD precinct. Harvey grabs a gun, asking, who the hell is that? Some kind of new Joker? And Neo tells him, no, just a stand-in. You may call me Neo Joker for now. As the supervillains storm the building, Batman, Barbara, and Dick all begin to make their way to help suppress the threat. Though while in the chaos, Neo and Hatter head into the records room and Hatter begins downloading the GCPD secret files. Once the two have what they want, Neo orders everyone to pull back and Bane begins to rip the bat signal off the roof. Jim pulls out his gun and Bane turns back, throwing the bat signal into him, knocking him off the ledge. Batman quickly jumps in after him, but after catching him, he crashes down to the alleyway below. Jim gets up looking at the broken bat signal. And Batman tells him, Ugh, I'll get you a new one. Jim tells him, No, 
I'm done defending you. We need a new plan. Gotham will demand it. You know, Napier's right. If Batman wanted to stop crime, he would give the GCPD a fleet of Batmobiles and a thousand utility belts. But the GTO is a good plan, so if you want to help, join it. If not, stay the hell away from me. With that, Jim leaves a speechless Batman in the alleyway. Back at Jack's apartment, he watched the news on the recent attack against the GCPD, and he tries to use the control device to call the villains back. Harley tells him that it's gotta be her. They have to stop the other Harley, Neo. She's planning on stealing him from her. But a voice then asks, why don't you let him decide for himself? And Jack and Harley turn to see Neo standing in the doorway. Croc then grabs Jack, slamming him into a wall. And Neo tells Jack, come on, let him out. I know the Joker is in there somewhere. The Joker is held prisoner by those pills. And Jack asks, what? You want to force me back into my psychosis so that you can reclaim your fake romance? It was never real. You were fake. Croc releases Jack and Neo pauses for a moment and says, no, you're just wrong. I just need to draw him out. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to be the one taking control of Gotham. Joker's massive ego won't allow me to surpass him. Later that night, Jim calls Barbara and Dick to a warehouse. And Dick asks, where are they? And why are they here? Jim says they really need to talk to them. Barbara says, they? And Jack Napier steps out stating, I'm only asking for 10 minutes of your time. He leads the two of them into a warehouse stating, your vigilanteism isn't working. I've come up with a method that we can all work together and adapt to change. Jack then shows them new Batmobiles, stating that he only wishes to help them. Together, we can make a fleet of state-of-the-art Batmobiles. There will be better coordination, less collateral damage, and this will be run by Commissioner Gordon. Jack tosses a set of keys to Barbara, telling her, but the best part is, you'll all get your own Batmobile. Meanwhile, at Neo's hideout, Neo sighs, stating that destroying the police headquarters didn't shake him. She's got to think bigger. Only if the Joker was here, she really misses him. Hadda looks up from his table asking how long were they together, and Neo explains that it all started when she was working back at the bank. See, she used to be a cutter. One day she wondered how many cuts she could make before people would notice, and then he showed up. The moment Joker pointed a gun at her, she realized that she actually wanted to live. She would do anything to live, even help him rob the very bank she worked at. It may have been because she looked like Harley that Joker let her come along, and eventually he gave her one of Harley's old suits to wear. But after the bank robbery, Joker took time to bandage her wounds. And while it may have been Stockholm Syndrome, she started to believe that that is where she belonged. Hatter asks what was her name before all of this, and she tells him Miriam. Miriam Drews. Hatter then says that maybe it's for the best that she got away from him. And then there's a ding. Hatter says it looks like they're in. He looks at the files, and Neo asks what they're looking for. And Hatter tells her, that it would give her an advantage over Napier. Neo reads through and finds out that there's a lot of security around Victor Freeze. Wait, Freeze was a Nazi, how old is he? The two of them begin to read the files and Neo then looks at an old photo and asks, who is Freeze shaking hands with? And Hatter says that that is one of the wealthiest families in Gotham. Victor Freeze, the Nazi, worked with the Waynes. The next morning, back in the warehouse, Jack takes his pills for the day, and then he begins to cough up blood. Harley runs over to check on him, and he tells her that he's fine. We'll see a doctor later. And Harley shouts that she is a doctor. Jack tells her sometimes the pills just upset his stomach. It's not a big deal. They're supposed to train, remember? As Jack begins to work on his fighting skills, Batman heads to where Jack was originally hiding, looking for clues. As he looks, Barbara and Dick make their way to him, and Batman tells them, there's something not sitting right about all of this. Two massive assaults, one in the financial district, and the other on GCPD headquarters by supervillains who never work together. What's more, none of them said a single word. The only two people who spoke were the Hatter and Neo Joker, so it's possible that they were using Hatter's mind control cards on the entire group. Batman bends down to look at something and then he pulls his hand back to discover it covered in clay. Dick tells him that none of them saw any of the Hatter cards. And Barbara asks what's on Batman's fingers. He tells her that it's clay. Clayface was the only criminal not here. He must be involved in this. He bags up the sample and Barbara begins to say that there's something else. And Batman quickly says, you want me to join the GTO? There's no chance in hell that I'm teaming up with Jack Napier and the GCPD's new attack force. Dick tells him that Napier has changed, and Batman tells him nothing has changed. Joker got out of Arkham and is trying to hurt Gotham with his latest scheme. We've all seen it before. Dick walks up to Batman telling him, Yeah, until Napier breaks a law, there's nothing we can do about it. And Batman tells him, You want him to win, don't you? Because it'll prove me wrong so that you can believe that he's better than me. Dick tells him that he's just afraid that this will make him worse than Napier. That everything he's done was for nothing. That he took the wrong lesson from his parents' death. Batman pulls back to swing at Dick, but Barbara charges in, throwing Batman to the side. She then turns back to Dick, shouting, You know what? You both suck! 
Why is it such a pissing contest between you? And why am I always in the middle? Bruce gave you everything, dick. You don't get to talk to him like that. And Bruce, you need to carefully think about your next move because Gotham is losing its patience with Batman. Bruce stands on the ledge and rather than answer, he fires a hook and swings off into the city. A short while later up in Jack's apartment balcony, Harley drinks her coffee and says that she was wondering when he would come. Batman leans out of the shadows telling her, Joker's in over his head. This is your chance to help him. And she asks, so you could put him in jail? No thanks. Batman takes out the clay sample and says, I know Joker used clay paste to manipulate everyone. And Harley says, his name is Jack. And if you can prove it, then arrest him. Harley goes back stating, Jack isn't a villain anymore. Whatever his sins are, he's put the city on the right track. So I'm begging you, please let it go before it's too late. Batman turns and punches a stone pillar, destroying it, shouting, Am I the only one who hasn't lost my mind yet? Can't you see that he's a violent, psychotic maniac? Harley then says Jack has changed Gotham forever, but he can't see it because he's so obsessed with figuring out how it all went wrong. He and Jack want the same thing, but he won't get it unless he works together with him. Batman doesn't respond, jumping off the balcony. And Jack says that he's never heard Batman yell like that before. Harley tells him, just stop it. I meant everything that I said. Maybe if the two of you weren't so stubborn, you would realize how similar you both are. Later, outside of Wayne Manor, Hatter looks through his computer and says the security system here is military grade. What could Wayne be hiding in there? And Neo asks, so what? Who cares if Wayne has secret Nazi records? And Hatter laughs, stating, patience, my dear. Information is the key to power. Every successful criminal knows that. Now, if we can just learn the secrets of the Waynes. Neo gets out of the van shouting, forget this! Hacking in is taking too long. And Hatter asks, what are you going to do? Storm the fortress? And she yells, no, I'm the one in charge. And yes. Suddenly, vines begin to creep out of the walls and up into the mansion and Neo stands with Poison Ivy. She says, see, I'm gonna knock the gate over. Ivy makes her way in using her vines to feel for any hidden areas. And then on the second floor, she finds a hidden room. Neo pushes back the false wall and looks around, stating that no one has been in here for a long time. Hatter runs over to the table, looking at a series of blueprints and says that this is it. The files in the Freeze family and the SS. It looks like the project involved hidden tunnels that run throughout Gotham. This is what we came for. Suddenly there's a creak of wood and Neo tells Hatter to be quiet. Someone's here. And Bruce runs out in his pink robe shouting, Oh my lord, you hooligans, get off my property! As Neo and Hatter run out, Ivy drags Bruce with them and the three hop back into the van to make their escape. A short while later, a car pulls up and Dick gets out asking what happened. And Bruce says that he's not sure. They broke in and they found a hidden room that even he didn't know about. Harvey pulls it behind and yells that he's got them on the radar. Nice robe, Mr. Wayne. Dick laughs as he gets back into his car and says, Yeah, stay put, Mr. Wayne. The GTO will handle this. Up ahead on the highway, the Hatter tries to escape the GTO, and with a new fleet of Batmobiles, Montoya, Duke, Barbara, Dick, and Harvey all close in on her. Montoya and Harvey use their cars to pinch the van, and then the mind control villains begin to pull out, attacking everyone. While everyone begins to avoid the oncoming attack, there's a loud coom as Batman drives his Batmobile onto the highway, crashing into Harley's van. Up in the helicopter above, Jim shouts for him to stand down. The GTO have this under control. And Barbara then radios in asking, what are you doing? And Bruce tells her, protecting my family. And he steps on the gas. Batman's Batmobile begins to pick up speed, pushing the van closer to the edge until he rams both vehicles over. The vehicles crash into passing freight ships, causing it to crash into one of the support pillars, keeping the bridge up. But while this is happening, Batman ignores it, grabbing Neo, asking, what did you take from the Waynes? As Neo pulls back, her backpack opens, and Batman sees Clayface's brain with the mind control card in it. He asks, what the hell? And Neo snatches the backpack and kicks Batman off of her and begins to make her escape. As Batman gets back up, he looks at what else he grabbed and sees the pictures of his parents with Freeze. Just then, the support pillar on the bridge gives, causing the entire bridge to begin to fall into the river below. Once the stones stop falling, Jim flies by the wreckage and announces to everyone that he is putting an APB out. He wants Batman arrested. In the eyes of the GCPD, he is no longer a vigilante. He is a super criminal. Later at Freeze's lab, Freeze goes over the most recent data from his test, and he reads that his aging is irreversible. Then the paper is slammed down onto the table with Batman's bloodied hand and the picture of his parents. He looks at Freeze and he tells him, start talking. And Freeze tells him that the Waynes are a family of many secrets. On to they, Bruce. Elsewhere, Neo and Hatter begin to follow the blueprints to an old abandoned tunnel. They walk in to find an old facility that used to be run by Freeze, and then Mad Hatter flips the power breaker and the lights come on. They see a giant machine mounted to the wall, and it's a large Freeze cannon. With the manhunt for Batman underway, Jim sits down with Nightwing and Batgirl in his office, asking one question, the one question that everyone wants to know. Who is Batman? 
Both Barbara and Dick tell them that that was not a part of the deal. They would join up as long as that knowledge was kept secret. And Jim says that he doesn't like it either, but Batman's left him no choice. His recklessness put Gotham Gate Bridge into the bay, allowing every super criminal to escape. Dick tells everyone that he'll help bring Batman in, but not like that, not revealing his identity. Jack Napier then says, Nightwing is right. He broke the law as Batman and he needs to be arrested as Batman. Once under arrest, we'll remove the mask for everyone to see who he really is. And Dick says it again. I will help you take Batman down, but the mask stays on. That is non-negotiable. Barbara asks, after everything that he's done for you, you should all be ashamed. You owe him another chance. Batman has served Gotham for decades. And now you're willing to ignore all of that for a seemingly reformed Joker? Well, I won't be a part of this any longer. Jack places his hand on Dick's shoulder, telling him, you did the right thing. And Dick turns back, punching Jack Napier, shouting, I'm here for Gotham, not you. Jim grabs another cigarette, stating, we need a plan to corner Batman. Our GTO cars are tough, but not Batmobile tough. Duke suggests that they probably use an EMP to stop Batman, but they'll run into the issue that all of their GTO cars will be fried as well. Montoya then says that they need something as tough as a Batmobile, but something analog, something old school. Jack asks, do you have anything like that? And Dick tells them, no, but I can steal one. A short while later, the original Batmobile speeds down the highway, catching up to Batman's modern Batmobile. Jim, sitting inside blindfolded, asks if everyone's in position. And everyone calls out Roger over the radio, but from there, everyone begins to move into position to force Batman to take a sharp turn through a warehouse. The autopilot for the analog Batmobile follows Batman close behind, and once both of them are inside, Montoya calls out to light them up. Several spotlights turn on, shining down on the two Batmobiles, and as Batman shouts, trying to cover his eyes, Jim says that he's turning off the engine. Now, as the EMP hits and Batman is still dazed from the lights, Jim takes off the blindfold and turns the car back on. He starts to give the Batmobile more gas, and he says that he's sorry for doing this, but someone's gotta get through to you. He rams into the side of Batman's car, causing both of them to crash into the nearby power line. He then slowly crawls out from underneath the wreckage, and Batman tells him, He'll always be the Joker. We know this. And as Jim gets out, he coughs. <laughs> Maybe. But Joker isn't our problem right now. It's Batman. Batman quickly jumps over the ledge to the lower streets, and as he does, a voice calls out that he's not easy to get over. Jack walks out, telling him the fanboy inside of him is still rooting for him. Part of him never wants this to end. Batman pulls out a battering, and he presses it to Jack's neck, and Jack says, Look at you. I'm unarmed. Wouldn't you rather beat me the old-fashioned way? One more romp for old time's sake. Batman then takes off the utility belt in the cape, and without saying a word, he cracks Jack Napier across the face. Jack wipes the blood dripping from his nose, and he says, that's more like it. The two men punch and they kick at each other, every strike hitting harder than the last. But as Jack headbutts Batman, he grabs the utility belt, wrapping it around Batman's neck. He then twists and squeezes the belt until Batman's struggle begins to fade, and his body falls to the ground. He sits down, looking at Batman's body, and he says that he thought of this moment for decades, wondering what he would do seeing him so broken and vulnerable. Oh God, what have I done? Later as lightning strikes over Arkham, Jack walks through the gates, carrying the body of Batman. As the officers help set him down, one mentions that they'll finally get to see who this guy is, but Jack shouts, no, we agreed to keep his secret. Those were the terms. And just as he says that, the sky lights up and the Hatter tells Neo Joker that her patience has paid off. She is the most dangerous villain in the history of Gotham, ready when she is. Neo smiles, telling him, hit it. And a blast of cold air hits the city, freezing everything that the cold cannon has been aimed at. Everyone scrambles to get into the air, and as Jim looks out of his helicopter, he sees on the building two words, send Joker. A short while later over in Freeze's lab, Barbara shouts, stating that the technology was pioneered in the final days of the Third Reich. Is that giant cannon in the middle of Gotham Harbor his? Does that belong to Mr. Freeze? Freeze continues his work, telling her that she must be the lab assistant that was with Mr. Wayne. And Barbara quickly remembers that she's still in her Batgirl costume. Freeze tells her that he's already aware of who Mr. Wayne is. And your secret is safe with me. Barbara then asks how did he know, and Freeze says that when Bruce lost a lot of blood, the butler insisted that the Freeze tech be transferred to Mr. Wayne. Barbara then asks why would he help the Waynes, and Freeze explains that it started a long time ago when I met Mr. Wayne as a boy back in World War II. Thomas helped with the Allies in creating a secret program that utilized valuable Nazi assets, high-ranking prisoners like my father, Baron von Freeze. 
To almost convince the Allies to let my father continue his work so long as it was for medicine. However, the facility that was built for my father was ultimately turned into a weapons facility, and thus, my father created the cannon. You now have what you want, it's time for you to leave. And Barbara asks, so you're not coming to help us? And Freeze tells her that his father built the cannon, he knows nothing about it. Now leave me and my wife in peace. Back with Jack Napier, he takes more pills and Harley shouts that he's taking way too many. He swallows the pills, yelling that he can't stop. If he stops, the Joker comes back. The pathetic Hot Topic shoplifter is in over her head. Harley grabs him, shouting, she is not pathetic, she is a person. A flesh and blood woman who loved you and wanted to give you everything. Jack pulls away, grabbing one of his coats, telling her that she is an oversight. I can handle her. And Harley tells him that he had a good run but he's in way over his head. Maybe it's time to hand this over to someone with a little more experience in fighting dozens of super criminals. Jack leaves asking her, how can you seriously be suggesting that I just spent a year proving Batman's methods didn't work? He gets ready and he heads over to the GCPD. All the while, the officers begin yelling and shouting, asking what they're supposed to do. Jim says that the White House has declared a state of emergency and Jack yells that they don't need help. This is a Gotham City problem and we can handle it ourselves. He turns back to the crowd, telling them, All we have to do is wait for the military to get here. But as Jack grabs his head, the color of his skin begins to go white, and the maniacal laughter of the Joker can be heard as he begins to shout, <laughs> And we'll give the Neo Joker exactly what she wants! <laughs> As the entire GCPD listen to Jack let out a mad cackle! As he becomes the Joker, everyone grabs their guns and they point them directly at him. Harley grabs a hold of him, shouting, Oh God, this can't be happening! And after a few more laughs, Jack begins to cough and the color of his skin returns to normal as he says that he is okay. He's got him under control. Harley then yells, What the hell was that? And Jack tells her that the medication is starting to lose its effect. He didn't tell anyone because he was trying to fight it, but it's getting worse. Jim asks, How long can you hold it back? And Jack tells him, long enough to stall Neo Joker. No matter what, by the end of the day, Neo Joker will be defeated by either me or the Joker. While the GTO forces move out, Dick and Barbara visit Bruce Wayne in his cell. And Barbara asks, how long is he going to sit there? They all know that he can break out at any time. He sits at his cot, stating, she begged me to let it go. Like she knew that this was going to happen. Like the two of us would need each other. Barbara asks, who are you talking about? And Bruce tells her, heartily, I figured out what's going on. Joker will come for me. Neo Joker is too powerful, and soon, he won't have a choice. Meanwhile, over at the freeze cannon, Neo surrounds herself with all of the villains still under the Hatter's control and tells Jack that she knows him. She's known him for years. She saw the Joker being buried by that same man who was threatening to take him from her. So she indulged his darker side. She became evil Harley Quinn in hopes of the Joker returning, and then she freed him. Jack says, you can't do this. And Neo yells, let him out! Because the only one who could stop me from destroying Gotham is not you, Jack. Jack remains quiet and he finally tells Neo, you win, I'll bring you the Joker. He turns and Neo asks, where are you going? And Jack spins back around as the Joker shouting, you will not question me! You want me back? Then we do it my way! Once Jack steps out of the small cottage, Harley follows him and Jack says, I turned this city upside down, exposed the corruption and ended vigilantism. All I wanted was for people to see the truth, that Gotham's problems aren't special. They don't need a lawbreaker like Batman. I followed the rules and it still didn't work. What's worse is all of this is my creation. Harley asks him, are you in there? Am I speaking with Jack? And Jack sighs, telling him, that should have worked. Harley turns to him asking, who are you kidding? You used every criminal to scare them into giving you power. You weren't playing fair from the beginning and now is not the time to start. Neo Joker can still be defeated. You just need a new way to rig the game and that's by doing something the Joker would never do. Work with someone that she would never expect. Later in Batman's cell, Jack opens it up and he tells him, I need your help. Batman stands up telling him, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that it was Harley who told you to come here. You're sharp, but you still aren't seeing all of the angles. Jack asks him, so you'll help me? And Batman tells him, I will always help Gotham. But before I do that, we have to agree on something. After all of this, I want a full confession about everything. How you attacked the financial district. All of this happening because of you, and ultimately, your responsibility in the creation of the Neo Joker. Explain to everyone how you exploited the legal system and the lies. Tell everyone that regardless of who you try to be, deep down, you will always be a murderer. Always the Joker. And Jack yells, I'm Jack Napier, not the Joker. I turned Gotham into a better place. 
And Batman tells him, but you broke the law. And Jack shouts, so did you! You might think that you're better than the Joker, but you'll never be better than Jack Napier. Jack then uncuffs Batman, and as Batman leaves, Jack jumps up behind him, stating that I will give you the confession only if I take the entire rap. Harley goes free. Batman sits down at the Batmobile and tells him, Your confession for Harley's freedom. Only if you tell me. What happened to Robin? What happened to Jason Todd? Batman hits the gas with Jack sitting next to him, and he tells him, I want to remember, but the Joker is holding it over me because it gives him power. Batman waits for a moment, and then he tells him, You better make him say it. Close your eyes and concentrate. He tortured Jason because the Joker wanted something. Jack closes his eyes and he begins to think back and he slowly begins to remember. Jack says that the Joker was jealous of Jason. The Joker wanted to know who Batman was. He wanted to know his true identity. Just before killing him, Jason finally broke. He said, I wish I'd never met Bruce Wayne. And then the Joker let him go. Batman stares at Jack and he asks, He's alive? Why wouldn't Jason return to me then? And Jack tells him, because he was broken. Not only by the Joker, but by Batman for making him Robin in the first place. The Joker let him free so that the game could go on. Batman would suffer more thinking that Jason was dead than knowing the truth. Batman then asks, if the Joker knew that I was Wayne, why didn't you say anything? And Jack stops him. Oh, I knew that you were Bruce Wayne. I've known for months. Ever since I uncovered the Batman Devastation Fund, I learned that it wasn't paid for by taxpayers. It all came from companies that Bruce Wayne owned. Bruce stares for a moment, and then he goes back to driving, and Jack says, I know everything. There's a lot more to the Waynes than you think, Bruce. A short while later at Freeze's lab, Freeze leaves Nora to rest, and Bruce says that she survived. Freeze says, thank God, yes. I won't wake her yet. What am I supposed to do? Tell her how my father's evil haunts us even to this day with that cannon? Bruce tells him that she won't see it because he's going to help them fix it. So Freeze grabs a chair sitting down, stating, I already told the woman in red hair that there's nothing I can do. The only thing I can offer you is knowledge about the tunnels. Thomas constructed those tunnels to help Gotham move supplies and medical equipment. It was a vast network. Thomas must have a map of it. Bruce then says, Neo Joker and Hatter stole that map. And Freeze sighs, stating that he knows where they are. They used to sneak out to see Norm. Later, after returning to the GCPD, Jim looks at the map and says, After all of this, we still don't know anything about these tunnels. Well, our next step is going to begin our invasion. There are seven entrances, and we're going to fill them with seven Batmobiles. Jack tells everyone that they're going to need to forget about the GTO cars. He has something better. He leads them into the next room, and everyone looks down in the garage to see Batman and his fleet of Batmobiles. Jack smiles and says, Batman and me working together. It's the last thing that she'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> As Jack laughs, he begins to turn into the Joker, and Bruce quickly charges at him and places him into a headlock. Jack begins to cough at being choked, and Harley runs up to him, telling him that he needs to come back. Just breathe! His skin slowly begins to turn back to normal, and he coughs, telling him, I got it. He's under control. It's okay. As everyone looks around, every officer has their gun pointed at Jack again, and Batman tells him, Jack, rise with me. As everyone starts to head to their cars, Batman reaches into his pocket, taking out the note that Alfred left for him before passing. Barbara asks what it is, and Batman says that it's something that Alfred left by his bed before he woke. Dick says, what's on it? And Batman tells him that he's too afraid to read it. These are Alfred's last words, and he's not ready to see them. Barbara asks if he's going to be okay, and Batman says that he'll never be okay. His hardest struggle has been to not let all of this affect everyone else. One day, he's going to leave them a note like this, and what will it say? Probably something that tries to protect them. Something that they can look back on and draw strength from the darkness. Something that will make up for his mistake. Something about why he still fights his Batman. Something about fighting for them. Because he wanted to leave them a safer Gotham. A Gotham that they can be proud of. So that one day, they can take off these masks. Barbara and Dick hug Bruce Wayne. And Dick tells him that it's a bit too long to fit on a note. Barbara laughs, telling him, yeah. He hugs the two of them back, stating that while he was in Arkham, he had a lot of time to think about what's really important. So Jim tells everyone it's time, and he and Batman walk to the Batmobile. As Jim says about the whole arresting Batman thing, he's... But Batman stops him and tells him, Don't be. You did the right thing. Things have gone too far, but it won't be for much longer. After tonight, I'm taking off the mask and telling Gotham the truth about Batman. With that, everyone gets into their assigned Batmobiles, and they race down the highway towards the Freeze Cannon. Jim tells everyone over the intercoms that their primary objective is to retake the cannon. Capturing Neo Joker is secondary. There are too many people counting on them to restore the city back to normal. So everyone needs to focus on that. And in Bruce's car, Jack asks if he thinks it's going to work. As Bruce tells him that they have no choice, the device is the only thing protecting Neo, so he'll be watching. 
He's going to have to go after her, and once they get inside, he won't want to talk to Jack. He's going to have to pretend to be the Joker. But Jack tells him, there's one problem with that. And the Joker shouts, I won't be pretending! As Batman silently stares, the mad cackling of the Joker fills the Batmobile. And the Joker shouts, I was always wondering what it's like in here. Very dark and gloomy, very Batman. Could use an air freshener though. Sandalwood, perhaps. Batman shouts that he needs to speak to Napier. And Joker tells him, I'm sorry, but with what we're up against, we're better off with me. Trust me on that. Batman asks, trust? And the Joker says, relax, Batsy. We're on the same side. Batman wants to save Gotham, and Joker wants to show the cosplayer how to swallow her teeth. As Joker goes on, Batman crashes into Bane, and the rest of the GTO begin to engage with the other villains still under Neo's control. Gordon tells everyone to remember, they're not here to fight. These walls are the only thing separating them from Gotham Bay. Just get to the cannon! Up on the cannon, Neo and Hatter watch, and Hatter yells that they've gotta keep them from the cannon if they take control. And Neo shouts, she knows, there's like a million things going on. Over in Duke's car, Harley hangs out smacking Croc with her mallet, setting Harvey up to crash into him. But once the truck stops moving, Croc picks up the truck and shakes him out onto the ground. Duke calls out to Harvey and throws him a gun, just in time for the both of them to fire into Croc's stomach. Batgirl tries to pull ahead, but a rocket flies by, blasting right into the windshield, blinding Batgirl. Montoya swerves after knocking rockets out of the way, and Batgirl yells that she can see the cannon now, delivering the package now. She steps on the gas and hits the launch button, rocketing herself to the highest point of the cannon. As the Batmobile crashes into it, Batgirl crawls out and is quickly grabbed by Ivy. Neo tells her that she should have brought backup, and Batgirl manages to say, I did. Just then, Ivy is hit in the back with a cold blast, and Freeze stands up telling them, I'm sorry, but I'm all out of ice puns. Freeze continues to fire at Neo, forcing her to retreat, and once it's clear, Batgirl asks if he can do it. He looks over the controls and says the cryo manifolds seem consistent with his father's earlier designs, indicating where the formula might conjoin. Batgirl says, huh? And Freeze tells her, yes, I'm good. Down below, Neo begins to make her escape, and as Batman speeds up, Joker calls out to her, You wanted the Joker! You're gonna get me, and all the bruises that come with it! Joker jumps off the Batmobile, punching Neo, knocking both the Hatter control hat and Clayface's brain onto the ground. As the control device breaks, Clayface's sand starts to leave all of the villains and begin to form back up into his original form. He begins to tower over everyone, and he points at the Joker, shouting, You! And Joker says, Oh, um, hey Clay, so what exactly do you remember? Clayface starts to charge at the Joker, and Batman yells, He's coming straight for Joker. And Joker yells, No crap! World's greatest detective, huh? Batman throws the keys to the Batmobile to Joker, telling him, Get out of here, now! Joker jumps into the Batmobile, and shortly after, Harley follows. Batman holds on to Clayface as Jack shouts, I'm back in control of my body. The Joker is suppressed. I'm not sure for how long. This might be our last chance. There's something I need to say. You were right. Only you knew the Joker's biggest secret. That buried inside of him was a good man. Thank you for giving me the chance to learn who I really was, and for giving me the chance to fall in love with you all over again. But before Jack can pull away, Clayface slams down onto the ground, causing Jack to swerve off course. Harley looks ahead at the giant set of steel doors that are closing and yells, we won't make it! And Neo and Hatter speed by on Rocket's rocket, and Neo says, no, but this will. There's room for one more. I really loved you, but I want you to live. After a moment of hesitation, Harley says that she's right. She does love him, and that's why. But before she could finish, Jack hits a button stating that if one of them is going to live, it's going to be the one who deserves it. I love you, Puddin'. Now get going. As Neo inches ahead, an explosion goes off as Jack hits the steel doors, and through the smoke, Harley shoots out riding on a bat cycle. She looks back, calling out, Jack! And she looks at Neo, and her sadness turns to rage. Back on the cannon, the force from the explosion sends cracks throughout the tunnel, causing the inside of it to flood. Batgirl tells Freeze that they are running out of time. It's now or never. And Freeze hits one last button, speaking to his father that he hopes he's watching. This is for Thomas Wayne. Suddenly, the cannon fires again, but the heat begins to thaw out the city, giving life to those that have been frozen. And while that goes on, Batman jumps into the bay, looking for Jack, finding him unconscious. He pulls him out of the water and begins to give him CPR, and Jack begins coughing up water, asking... <coughs> <coughs> Where's Harley? Back in the tunnels, Harley and Neo are racing against the giant wave of water that is following them. The two ride along the walls, and they find a sewer to escape, and just as they fly into the air, Harley grabs onto Neo's backpack. The two fall into a nearby building, as Harley begins to punch, and she shouts, He's dead because of you! 
And Neo struggles, yelling, I was trying to save him from those pills! They were turning him into something that he wasn't! Carla then pulls one of Neo Joker's knives from her back and says, He was always Jack Napier! And she stabs Neo in the chest. Harley then picks Neo up and Neo says that she's got to admit, when we both fell in love with him, he was always the Joker. You don't want to admit that you fell in love with an abusive, loveless serial killer. Harley brings the knife up yelling, No! I loved him in spite of all of that! And just before Harley could stab again, Duke comes over the radio. He says he's not sure if you can hear him, but Jack's alive. A short while later, back over at the pier, Jack tells Batman, <coughs> You should have let me drown. I would have died a hero. And Batman says, I would never let that happen. Jack asks, what? Not letting me die or not letting me be a hero? And Batman tells him, pick one. A few seconds later, Harley pulls up with Neo, excitedly yelling, Puddin! Harley then runs over to hug Jack, and Jack tosses the keys of the Batmobile back to Batman, telling him, a deal's a deal. Here's a copy of my confession. Now take me back to Arkham. But I do have a request. Can you at least allow me to return before I revert to the Joker? Allow me to walk through that gate while I still have my dignity. As Gordon brings Jack to his nice newer cell, he says that it's a small gift, a thank you from Gotham. Jack looks around telling him, thank you. I have one last request. Marry me and Harley before we're out of time. A short while later, as the sun begins to set, a priest comes into the cell and says, do you, Harleen Quinzel, take Jack Napier for better or for worse until death do you part? And Harley says, I do. And as the priest asks Jack the same question, the color in his face begins to fade and he begins to cough up blood. He falls to the ground as the priest continues and the priest finishes with Joker grabbing Harley by the head shouting, Let you! <laughs> but while the Joker's laugh echoes throughout the halls of Arkham, Neo listens and she smiles. Later as Batgirl and Nightwing wait in a building, Batman tells them, Thank you for coming. I thought we could read this letter that Alfred left when he died together. I just... Nightwing tells him, it's okay. Batman opens up the letter left to him by Alfred before he passed, and he begins to read it out loud. The letter told him that he knew that he would be frightened to let him go, that his death would make him feel more alone than ever, but he must not push the ones that he loves away. He is happy knowing that he will one day read this and that Barbara and Richard will be there to support him, and that is because they love him. Reading this also means that he will finally be ready to say goodbye. Goodbye, my son. P.S. Check the loose floorboard in my quarters. There's something there you're ready to see. With that, the next day came and Gotham began to fix itself and return to normal. The man Jack Napier confessed that he manipulated the justice system to free himself and that he was the one who originally controlled the villains, causing them to attack. Harley worked with Duke to restore Backport and give many in the area jobs, but as Harley returned to her apartment that night, she sits on her balcony stating that she is probably the only person that can hear him sneaking up. Batman jumps down and says, I know about the pills. You're the one who created them, and you knew that if you provoked me enough, I would force the Joker to ingest them. You're the one who recorded it, you pitted Gotham against me, and that you planted the seeds for Napier's reform. This whole time everyone thought Jack was the White Knight, but it was all you. Harley tells him, you're good. Jack didn't even figure it out. And Batman asks, who do you think told me? Harley thinks and then asks, if Jack knew, why didn't he say anything? Batman asks, why did you do it? It wasn't because of romance, there was another reason. Harley leans back and says the Joker might have been responsible for terrorizing Gotham, but Batman wasn't exactly making it any better. Someone needed to break the stalemate before the two of them tore this city apart. No one else knew them like she did. She was betting on Jack having a lot to show, and she was right. Harley turns to leave, but before going, Batman says, Napier mentioned something about his old cell, about discovering Joker in that cell. What did he mean? Harley waves her hand and says, I'm not sure. And then Batman asks, do you really think Napier's gone? Harley looks back and smiles before going back into her apartment. Later at the GCPD, Gordon shuts the door to his office, stating that he heard that he and Freeze had been working on a serum to revive Nora, and they finally managed to bring her back. Batman then says, if only there were two patients and we lost one. Gordon asks, was it someone close? And Batman tells him, it was my best friend. Gordon sits down and tells him that he's sorry. Batman then drops keys to the Batmobiles on the table and he says, I've learned a lot over the last year. I've enjoyed hurting criminals. I became Batman because I could be as brutal as I wanted. But sometimes I wonder why I wear the mask. Gordon tells him, Gotham needs Batman. You may have gone off the rails a bit, but we both know you did some good here. Napier did us a favor. We now know the flaws and we can work to fix them. Given time, Gotham will also learn to trust Batman again. Batman reaches for his mask, removing it, telling him, No, we need to tell them who Batman is. It's the only way anyone will trust me. But most importantly, it's the only way that you'll trust me, Jim. 
And there you have it! You've made it, my friend, to the end of a full story series! Now, I don't think this one's nearly as long as most of our full stories, but it's still pretty long! And apparently I have an accent, I don't know why, but thank you so much! Let us know in the comments down below other long playlist storylines that we have done that you think should be put together in a full story series. Because we're kind of, we, we drum them up, it's there so much. We've been doing this a long time, guys. A long, long time. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really did enjoy you hanging out with us for this longer video. I had a great time, I hope you did. Uh, the entire time you've been watching this video, I've actually been standing right here. Like, I was kind of, like, off to the side. Like, the panels are in front of me. I stood here for the entire length of the video. I was eating chips and nuts. Like, I had some cashews here. And I was drinking this drink. This drink was full when you started your video. And I've been standing here the whole time. You have no evidence this is online. I'll see you next week for another full story.